Ideally, this should have been the first slide in ADBC, that is the salient features of ADBC. I have been telling uh, in this course time and again that ADBC, that is ABAP Database Connectivity, is not the proprietary feature of HANA. This property is database independent. Uh, years before, even when we had not heard about HANA, ABAPers used to connect to the underlying database explicitly using native SQL. Native SQL means in the ABAP code, we used to write exec SQL and then end SQL. So it, it, it's, it was like exec SQL dot then do some, some uh, queries and then end exec. So x SQL and end x. So that was the syntax we, which we used for native SQL. But why did we use native SQL in ABAP? Was it a performance issue? Uh, performance might be one of the cases, but the most generic reason why native SQL was used uh, is that the database table were not available in the SAP data dictionary. Yeah, you heard it right. There are many tables in the database which do not uh, are not exposed in the data dictionary. So in those cases, uh, we might want to use this uh, native SQL and connect or view or retrieve the data from the database. I hope I have not confused you. Say for example, the Metal Master table Mara, it is in the database and it is also available in the data dictionary. But say there is another table XYZ, which is available in the database, which the database administrator can see, but it is not available at the data dictionary level for the evapor. In those cases, we need to explicitly We'll connect to the database and then write the exec SQL and end exec and then retrieve or connect to that database and retrieve the data from that table which is there in the database but not available at the data dictionary. So before we uh, talk about the selling features of ADBC, let me quickly highlight the selling features of native SQL. Native SQL allows us to use database specific SQL statements in an ABAP program. We cannot do the syntax check of the native SQL statement in the ABAP program. If there is any issue, we come to know only at runtime. The data is transported between database table and the ABAP program using the host variables. So what is host variable? The host variable are the variables which the program is using, not which is coming from the database. So you select XYZ from table AB, ABC into the host variable means the variable which you will be using in the program and where the where matner equal to host variable so the code might look like this so in this case uh, wa matner in front of which there is a colon so this is a host variable and colon p underscore matner this is a host variable. When we write HANA program, we also use at the rate sign, right? Many a times you use at the rate sign to identify or to tell the program explicitly that at the rate is the host variable, whether, whereas others one are from the database. So similarly, in native uh, SQL, we had colon for the host variables. Uh, in this example, I have showed Mara, uh, but you should not be thinking or doing an exec sql and end es exec sql on a mara table because mara is already available you can use the open X sql directly but uh, say imagine instead of mara it was some other table like ora underscore um, mat underscore mgt something like that which is in the database not available at the data dictionary so in that case this makes sense we talked about uh, native S sql let us now talk about OpenSQL. What are the advantages of OpenSQL? So the most important advantage of OpenSQL is that it provides uniform syntax and semantics for all the database systems supported by SAP. Say your application server is mounted on a HANA DB, another one is on Oracle, another one is in microservice, but the OpenSQL which you write, the ABAP code which you write, is the same for all the underlying database so no matter what database you are in the above statement does not change that is the beauty but if you write a native sql uh, statement 
it will be different for Oracle, it will be different for HANA, and it will be different for microservice. So, Microsoft. So, so open means open to all database. So that is one of the features of open database. Another feature is the open SQL statements will work only for database tables that have been created and replicated in the ABAP dictionary. So if they are sitting in the database but not there in the ABAP dictionary, you cannot use open SQL. So uh, the best way to remem remember what is an open SQL is open means open to any database. So ABAP program that uses open SQL statement will work in any SAP system uh, regardless of what uh, database it is okay so that's why it is called open sql now finally let us come to the salient features of adbc so adbc is an object based api we already talked about what is an api api is a cluster of class and methods which uh, are are called in a framework and does some features either it is consume something or it gets consumes and gives an output so it is a framework of uh, classes and methods um, technically, ADBC does the same thing as the native SQL. So, ADBC writes native SQL which would be executed at the database layer. So, what is the advantage of ADBC then? So, ADBC makes the process of connecting to the database and transferring the native SQL code to be executed at the database layer smoother and organized. So, this is a an object oriented approach uh, of using the native SQL using ADBC. The object oriented approach brings with it flexibility and ADBC is found in where used list. So that is one of the important feature and also error handling of the same native SQL code is better in ADBC. In ADBC uh, we can handle the errors more efficiently which you cannot do in plain native SQL statements. So finally the first salient feature of ADBC is just like native SQL, syntax checker cannot catch issues in the code which, is, which the underlying database is expecting. So we can handle the exceptions properly. So we should always handle uh, the exception just like CX underscore SQL underscore exception, right? So we have been using that in our um, program. So we need, we are doing that because we do not know if that SQL is correct or not at while writing the code we can only know while running it and while running it you do not want to get short dumps so in order to prevent the short dumps we need to handle the exceptions properly another important feature uh, which adbc has is that we can only use standard internal tables as of now the hashed and sorted tables are not allowed as target in the adbc programs when you are working with database, you should never forget to handle the client or the mandate. Remember in one of the videos, earlier videos, where we did not uh, select the client or mandate as one of the outputs in the attribute views or analytical views or calculation view, what happened? You were not able to display it um, in the preview. You could not do the database preview because you had not mentioned explicitly which a client you want to show so similarly while working with adbc you should always handle the client explicitly otherwise you might get data because one data can database can be connected to multiple clients and then if you are running it in say client 130 you might get data from 130 you can get data from 110 and also you can get data from 006 so whichever client is connected to the database you might get all the data so while writing a select query you should explicitly mention the client or the mandate and another important feature which we have learned uh, a hard way is that adbc does not necessarily release the allocated memory or resources on the database therefore it is always always recommended it is a very good practice uh, to close the query and close the connection so that you release all the memory and the resources uh, which the ADBC is consuming. We know that uh, we can write the native SQL in the SQL console of the HANA studio or the Eclipse or the ADT which you are using. But don't be surprised if I say that you can write the native SQL in GUI as well. So if you have GUI, 
if you are in ECC 6 or if this is 7.4 or HANA S4 HANA, you can still write your SQL, uh, native SQL and check in this transaction. The transaction is DBA cockpit. You might not have access to this T code, but if you have access in your development box, just go to this DBA cockpit, go to performance, go to the additional functions and then SQL co command editor and just write the code. So if you are in the same uh, editor or in the same database like I am, then you can write this particular code and then hit execute, you will get an output. Okay, you can try this. So this can be another exercise for you to uh, learn some of the native SQL statements.